So there we are. Lucinda, me, and 70,248 of our closest friends all on our feet, all holding our breath. On the field, the game's final timeout is winding down and Jacksonville's kicking unit is getting ready for the field goal that will cap off an improbable comeback and send them on to the next round of the playoffs. After trailing in the second quarter 27 to nothing, the home team mounted a historic rally and battled back to a score of 28 to 30. And here we are, three seconds and three points away from the third biggest comeback in NFL postseason history. And then the snap, perfect hold. Our kicker, Riley Patterson, steps up. He swings his leg like an axe into the heart of every Chargers fan, and he drills the ball straight down the center for a 36-yard field goal and a one-point victory. The crowd goes nuts. We're all screaming. We're all high-fiving. I'm hugging strangers, even though I hate hugging people almost as much as I hate strangers. On the field, the Jaguars team and their staff rush in to celebrate. They hoist Riley Patterson up in celebration of the victory. And as they do, his arms rise to his neck and desperately grope at his collar so that quick, before the cameras can cut away... He can pull out his goddamn cross necklace and present it to the television audience like he was trying to ward off a fucking vampire. And that's all you saw if you were watching at home. But for those of us in the stadium, we got to watch him rush up and down the fucking sidelines showing his cross to everyone in attendance so we knew good and damn well which religion just kicked the game winner. So yeah, as silly and crass as it might have seemed on television, it was actually even worse. And I have to ask, what message are you sending, bro? What what is being communicated by doing that? I mean, I you know, I, I get that he's letting everybody know that he's Christian, but to what end? Is he saying Jesus likes me better than the Chargers kicker? That he likes Florida better than California? That that Riley cheated and used Jesus magic at the end? I mean, it's a 36-yard field goal, man. An extra point is 33. Unless you're kicking for the Dallas Cowboys, you should be able to make a 36-yard field goal without resorting to superpowers or otherworldly favors. Or, or maybe he's just trying to give all the credit to God, right? But it's a bit presumptuous to think that all the credit was something that was his to give, right? Jesus Christ Almighty needs to get in line behind Trevor Lawrence, Doug Peterson, and Travis Atn Jr. And and forgive me, but I don't see anything remotely humble in the message. This isn't because I practice really hard and or am physically gifted. It's because I chose the correct religion and overtly displayed its symbols. I, I know this is tricky for Christians, but... It's not that I'm good. It's that the very creator of the universe likes me better. That's the opposite of humility. Okay? All the more so when you're doing it on behalf of a team of 55 guys without their approval. I mean, seriously, we see this shit all the time, and I'm genuinely curious what the point is. Because for a person like myself, who is never religious in that way, it seems like he's saying, see, I'm not a Muslim. No no fucking Muslim could have done that because Jesus doesn't love them. In fact, I genuinely can't think of anything else that it could communicate. I mean, I guess I could phrase it in a way that's less of an indictment, but but the most generous interpretation I can come up with for this message is, I am a member of the in-group. And what a terrible time to send that message. Right. The, the, the beauty of that moment was that with the exception of a smattering of very disappointed Chargers fans, everybody in the group was united in celebration. 70,000 people all overjoyed together for the same reason in the same moment. Black, white, Republican, Democrat, young, old, atheist, and believers all joined in a singular celebration of that precise moment. And your instinct in that incredible moment is to say, no, nah, no, me, my group, in group, in group. I mean, I mean, it's hard to imagine a time that that would be less appropriate, but it's even harder to imagine a time that it would be at all appropriate. All right, we're talking about using your time at the mic to say, I'm part of the majority, hooray, the majority. Pretty much all times are bad for that. I I guess you could argue that church would be a good time for it, but then you're arguing that church is good for something and we have to veer off into a whole different diatribe. The point is, is that the message is necessarily exclusionary. And what's more, it's pretty much nothing but exclusionary. And not just to non-believers or members of other faiths, by the way. I'm I'm willing to bet that there are a few Christians on the Chargers roster too, right? Hell, I don't have to guess because Riley's wasn't the only ostentatious display of religiosity I saw that night. 
The other big one happened right before kickoff. Uh, one of the Chargers players runs to the 50-yard line just as everybody's going back to the locker rooms and very conspicuously prays in the center of the field, Bremerton style. But, but I guess he didn't pray good enough, right? Or, or a Riley double plus unprayed or he, the, the, that dude looked at a, a woman with lust in his heart afterwards. It's something because in the end, God chose the Jaguars. So Riley Patterson, kicker for the Jacksonville Jaguars, fuck you for the garish display of Christianity. But also I forgive you because holy shit, what a fucking game. And if it takes, you know, publicly bragging that a magical space pedophile has given you superpowers for you to knock him down. I reluctantly support it for the duration of this playoff run. But after that, reread your Bible, pay particular attention to Matthew 6, 5, and 6, and get back in the fucking closet.